How attractive is a black slave through the eyes of a white woman? Thank you for following the story of Joseph and Catherine, an impossible love story during the Civil War. In this work, you will witness the conclusion of this short love story between a black slave and his owner, a white woman. Sitting at the big table in the kitchen of the big house, in front of the black slave, who at this moment is stealing the heart of his owner, a white woman, as a way to meet this black slave and what the future will bring, there are some questions that I should ask the black slave, who is the center of life, without him knowing anything about my feelings for him. As a way to please my curiosity as a woman in love, I asked the following question. Joseph, do you have children? No, my young lady. My former owner did not allow slaves to have a concubine, much less impregnate a female slave or have children. Tell me, Joseph, what would you do if you were a free man? I would travel north and work hard to buy a piece of land, find a concubine and have many free-born children. As a black man, I like to work on the land. Thanks, Joseph, for your answers. Please don't talk to anyone about this conversation with me. Joseph responded with a gesture of respect. So it shall be, my young lady. Thousands of thoughts in my mind after being in front of Joseph. Only God knows the desire that I had to have him in my arms around that black man who steals my heart to tell him everything I feel for him. But I am the young lady of the house. I must respect my status as a woman, but also respect what Joseph may or may not be feeling for me, which is something which I dare not guess right now, much less ask him about his feelings, which is inappropriate for a woman to ask a man such questions. If you consider yourself a woman, you project self-respect or self-love, and more when that woman is the owner of that slave man. Anyone who knows the relationship between a slave owner and a slave must recognize the great power that the slave owner has over a slave. Any response from this slave is subject to pleasing or obeying the owner's intentions. In Joseph's case, as a slave, he might feel compelled to please his owner. As a man, he might be pleased to satisfy a woman's desires. There is a big difference between the two actions. The first is by obligation. The second is because he wants it. For that reason, for now, I prefer to keep quiet, suppress my feelings, and wait for my situation to change, and even more so when no one knows what will happen after the Civil War ends. This deep love that I have towards a black slave and all the fantasies of being in the arms of a forbidden love because of his skin color, I must learn to suppress this feeling for the good of both, is this black slave the reason that my life is full of doubts, insecurities, and conflicting feelings right now? That's something that only I know. And maybe you, if you are listening to my story. This is one of the reasons why some women suffer when they fall in love, with the wrong man and the wrong time. Can this relationship be a reality that I should not be ashamed of in the future? If I have to think what people will say about me, Maybe not. If the president, Abraham Lincoln, fulfills his promise to free all the slaves, but knowing my father's slave ideas, I don't think that matters much in the southern states. If slavery is abolished after the Civil War, maybe it could be for the happiness of my heart. I hope so. For the happiness of all slaves, too. Could white Americans in the future accept the union between a black man and a white woman? It is an answer that I don't know at this time. But there is something, I'm sure. That black man who works hard in the plantation of my father is the man I love. And nothing can change that feeling towards him. In the time of slavery, the love between a black man and a white woman was not reason enough to be together. We are all the result of our time, and we act according to what it imposes on us, and more when we all respond to the social differences to which we belong. And don't talk about the racial differences during slavery in the United States. 
in which racism and white supremacy want to perpetuate and exploit these differences. One Thing is a fictional story in a romance novel where everything is possible, and another thing is the reality of life. Could the love story between Joseph, a black slave, and Catherine, the owner of that slave, be a reality? The answers could be found at the end of this story of forbidden love. One morning when I woke up, starting my daily routine in the big house on the plantation, I saw Jenna, a servant slave who, for years, had worked for my father, a black woman who many times treated me as if I were her daughter. I saw a smile on Jenna's face that caught my attention. Walking at a slow pace as if I didn't notice her change, I approached Jenna and asked her with an astonished expression, What is the reason for the happiness that I see in your face and in your eyes? Jenna answered me with a soft voice like a mother speaking to her daughter. The Civil War ended, my young lady. The Civil War ended. Hearing that answer, my heart was beating strong, stronger and stronger, and I don't know why. Maybe God knows the answer and what that means to me. Could my dream be possible? Actually, at this moment, I have no answer. Looking at the slaves outside the house, I noticed in each one of them the same expression of joy that the black woman who was working in the kitchen had, who was preparing the breakfast meal. I look at my father with an expression of anger and disappointment and ask him, Why is the reason for your bad mood, father? President Abraham Lincoln established the emancipation of slaves, my child. All slaves will be free from this moment on. All slaves will be free. When I heard those expressions from my father, the image of that slave stealing my heart came to my mind and my heart. Now I can imagine that this black slave, a free man who works on my father's plantation, having a happier life with the woman he loves and deserves, having many boys and girls who will not be born slaves. Finally, God answered my prayers, looking up at the sky, thanking him for what was happening at the time. In my particular case, I feel happy for Joseph. If my father is against the emancipation of black slaves, imagine his reaction if I tell him that I am in love with a black man who was his property before the end of the Civil War. With a certain nervousness in my voice, I told my situation to Jenna, the black servant, who for years works in the big house of my father, whom I consider as my mother, asking her a simple question. Is love possible between a black man and a white woman? With a soft and loving expression on her face, she replied, It all depends on the sacrifices that you are willing to make to be together with the man you love, my young lady. Emma? Yes, my young lady. I need to ask you a favor. Whatever you order, young lady. Tell the foreman to saddle two horses and leave it at the back of the big house. Riding on my favorite horse, I stopped in front of Joseph, who was working in the field. In a soft voice, I turned to Joseph, asking if he knew how to ride a horse. Joseph replied, Yes, my young lady. Please, Joseph, can you call me Catherine? Ride the horse next to me that I saddle up for you. You'll soon be a free black man and you could go where you want. Joseph, I need you to accompany me to one of my favorite places. I could need your company and protection to feel safer, and more so now with all the conflicts that the nation is going through at this time. Whatever you say, Catherine, you know that your wishes are orders to me. Joseph and I, riding together before the indifferent looks of the slaves, we rode to the highest part of a small hill, and next to a large tree we both sat under the shadow of the big tree, looking at the beautiful waters of the lake that was in front of us. In times of crisis, when I have a problem with my father, in this place I find the peace that I need so much. Joseph answers, looking out at the beautiful landscape offered by the panoramic view of the large lake. We slaves are not allowed to visit a place like this, even on our days of rest. We slaves are forbidden to leave the plantation lands. Joseph, 
Yes, my young lady. Please, call me Catherine. It is a custom of slaves to address their master in that way as a sign of respect. Don't worry about that. It's just you and me here. With some doubt in me, I ask the following question. Joseph, as a free man, you would fight for an impossible love? Catherine, I think it is better to dare to fight for the impossible than to spend a lifetime thinking about what could have been. It was an answer that I did not expect from a man who has been a slave all his life. Joseph, do you find me attractive? Why do you ask me that question, Catherine? She answered him. You told me that it is better to fight for what you want than to spend a lifetime regretting it. Right now, you are in front of a woman who is in love with a man who knows nothing about these feelings. Someone whom he cannot have due to the differences in social classes, but also because of the man's skin color. But above all, because of the great sacrifices and struggles both must face in a society that does not approve of this type of relationship between a white woman and a black man, a black slave who will soon be a free man. Joseph, looking at my eyes, took her hands with a gentle touch, intertwined their fingers as a sign of union, a loving touch that only two couples in love understand. With a loving look, I approached Joseph and put my head next to Joseph's chest as a sign of protection about what will come and what life could bring for the future. I told him silently, you must believe that dreams are possible if it really is what you want most in life. I told Joseph in a few words, when you love someone, everything is possible and even more so when that love is reciprocated by the person you really love. Joseph, upon hearing those words, tenderly embraced me with both arms as a sign of understanding the meaning of what he was hearing, but also as a sign of love for his master, a white woman who is in love with a black slave. But at that moment, the words master and slaves did not exist. Only the word love existed in front of the eyes of God. For some reasons, the liberation of slaves in the southern states did not occur at the speed that everyone expected in the face of resistance from many plantation owners, including my father's plantation. One thing is what men say, and another thing is what they do. No man gives away freely what he thinks is the most valuable possession in his life. In this case, we are talking about the possession of black slaves, who work for free for the owners of the plantations. The government and many local authorities support the demands of the slave owners for reparation for their loss of their property. Perhaps that is why the liberation of slaves in the southern states requires the intervention of the federal government for this to be reality. The life of the slaves was in the hands of the slave owners, not what the government decided. It was a reality of the time. Since the freedom of Joseph was not in the hands of the government, but in the owner of slaves, I made a decision that changed both the life of Joseph and the life of Catherine, who is telling her history of a forbidden love. With the determination and inner strength that every woman has in a certain moment of difficulties, I approached my father and asked him in that moment to give Joseph freedom. My father looked at me with a shocked face, and he asked me, How special is that black slave that you want to free him? With a desperate face, I told him, Because I love that black man. My father took both my hands and looked into my eyes, telling me that love was impossible in these times. A white woman is not allowed to have marital relations with a black slave, my father, furious about the situation, sent for Joseph. In front of me, he asked Joseph a question. How dare you put your slave eyes on my daughter? 
Joseph, with an expression of respect, he replied, I know I should never have fallen in love with my owner, a beautiful white woman. A black slave like me does not deserve the attention of a white woman, much less her love. Therefore, my master, I ask your forgiveness. As a man, I always follow my heart, even when I'm loving the wrong woman. The love of a woman like your daughter, whose love I could never deserve. Whatever the punishment for my indiscretion, I am willing to accept it. As a woman in love, that response from Joseph made me feel like I did the right thing. Now I must wait for the decision of my father about what will happen with Joseph, but also about the future of a love that was impossible from the first moment I laid eyes upon a black slave, which was owned by my father. Several years later, living in the city of Boston in New England, I waited with anxiety and happiness for my children to arrive from school, but also the love of my life, that black man called Joseph, who was owned by my father, who is now the father of my children and the husband of a white woman. A black man who owns the heart of a white woman, a white woman who dared to give up everything for the love of her life. My father, to avoid criticism from friends, other plantation owners, and important figures of the social elite, although he did not approve of what I was doing, it was against his principles, and whom I chose as my life partner, a decision that my father does not approve. Discussion, refusal, and seeing the determination on my part, understood my feelings of a woman in love, and accepted my choice. But I had to move to a northern state where my relationship would not cause so many problems. He bought a modest ranch outside the city of Boston in my name, letting me know in many of his letters, if you ever lack money or support, you can count on your father's unconditional love. Much love for you and your family, my dear daughter. This love story proves that everything is possible if we really want it. Right now, Joseph and I live happily as husband and wife in the eyes of God, because marriage between a black man and a white woman is legally prohibited in all states of the Union. We know that there is a long way to go for racial equality to exist and for interracial marriages to stop being illegal according to the law, but it is something that we both don't care about. What matters is the love we feel for each other. Thank you very much for being part of our love story. Joseph and Catherine, with love. All the characters and part of its content is not based on real events and should be seen within that context.